Hi, it's Chester at Blue Pecan Computer Training. And in this video, we're going to look up and return the last value entered within a column. And to do this, I'm going to use the lookup function. Now, I'm going to start by explaining something in the middle of the formula that we're going to create. And in the middle of this formula, we're going to test which cells are not empty. Now to start with, I'm going to select C4, say down to C20. Those are the cells that I think I'm going to enter values in. And I'm going to say which of those cells are not empty. So do not equal an empty text string. And if I press enter, in Excel 365, it spills its results into surrounding cells. But if you're not in Excel 365, you can see those results by selecting your formula pressing F9 on your keyboard. So you can see I get a true for every cell in that selection that is not empty, and then a false if the cells are empty. I'll just undo that, Control Z. Now the numeric equivalent of true is one, and the numeric equivalent of false is zero. And I want to convert the trues to ones and the falses to errors. And the way to do that is divide one by the result of these tests. So I'm going to say one divided by the result of these tests. And if I press enter, you can see I either get a one, and that one is for every non-empty cell in the range that I selected, and then I get a divide by zero error for every cell that is empty, because one divided by zero gives you the divide by zero error. So how does this relate to the lookup function? Well, I'm going to put this set of results in the lookup function. And the first argument in the lookup function is lookup value. Now, I actually want to look up two, comma. Now, the reason I want to look up two is that lookup does an approximate match. So what it's going to do, it's going to run through all of these results until it gets to the first value that isn't a one. So this divide by zero error. And then the way approximate match works is it goes back to the next smallest item. So the next smallest item will be this last one. Now that last one is the position of the last value within the column that I selected. Right, so I'll just undo the F9 effect, comma. And what I want to do is return within the result vector, the value in the same position as that last one within our lookup vector. So our result vector is the same range of cells. I close the bracket and I press enter. So I get eight to one. But if I was to type another value in here beneath my eight to one, it would return that value instead. And what you could do is refer to the whole of column C there rather than a specified range of cells within column C. And if you're going to do that, you'd also need to do it in your result vector argument. Press enter. And then you know whatever you type into column C, the last value is always going to appear in this cell. Now lookup will also work in a row of values. You can use exactly the same method. So we'd say lookup two. And our lookup array is one divided by open bracket which of these cells is not an empty text string. And then my result vector would be the same range of cells. If I close the bracket and press enter, it returns eight to one. Now obviously I could extend that range out to include cells that I might one day put values in, but it's the same basic technique that we used for looking up the last value within a column. Okay. That's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's been useful. If it has, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.